Alright, so today we're going to talk about the creation and history of diamonds. Um, I got a quote from Daniel Defoe that is, The soul is placed in the body like a rough diamond, and must be polished or the luster of it will never appear. And I picked this quote because, like this slide we'll show later on, that there are a lot of uses and um, uh, things that things with, with about diamonds that are used other than their luxury. Um, and diamonds are, you know, pure and expensive and embody perfection and royalty. Everybody wants a diamond. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, everyone wants to know when it's to be, be them, because they're a luxury. Um, I like minerals, uh, I like learning about the earth, so I'll tell you about everyone's favorite rock, which is the diamond. I did the research, so that's why I'm qualified to tell you about it. Um, let's see here. Let's talk about how diamonds are formed. Now a lot of people think coal is a big part of the diamond creating process. But the truth is that they're almost never involved because coal is a byproduct of plant life and diamonds have been around a lot longer than plants have. Um, and there are three necessary ingredients to create diamonds, which is a carbon substance, heat, and pressure. And diamonds form usually 90 miles under the Earth's surface and that gets to about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's the perfect place for diamonds to be made. Uh, and there are four ways diamonds are formed. Uh, the first is uh, formation in the Earth's mantle. As you can see, um, these are diamonds for the peak. And the diamonds are made here, like I said, nice below. Uh, and then a, an eruption or lava source brings them up into the continental plate where we find most of them, or they bring them to the top. Um, the second way here is formation and subduction zones, which is when a, um, a plate on the ocean floor collides with a uh, continental plate and they make a grind against the surface, and that creates the pressure and heat necessary for diamonds to be created. Uh, the fourth, uh, the third way is, of course, with asteroid impact. Now, this is the only way that coal can help the process of creating a diamond because the it, the asteroid impacts the Earth, and that creates the pressure and heat um, large enough to turn the coal into diamond. And the fourth one is just creation in the uh, in space, and then it just comes down to Earth. Next is the history and historical use. Um, as people have always wanted them. Since the 15th century, they were seen as items that gave people supreme strength and power. Um, and the Greeks are to blame for that, for giving it the name animus, which means indestructible. Um, and we use them, obviously, for wedding rings, and the Green Greeks are to blame again for this because they were seen um, to demonstrate the inextinguishable flame of love. Um, so, there's that. And then some rich guy, some Austrian guy back in 1477, popularized, popularized it by giving his wife a diamond ring. And uh, diamonds have been used for tools way longer than coating them on tools like we do now. Um, there are tools found in China at 2500 BC that were used as whetstones, a stone that's used to um, grind weapons against and polish and sharpen. And there are also rubies and sapphires found along with those and those whetstones. And now we're going to move on is the modern use, and we can't talk about the not the modern diamond without talking about its ugly cousin, cubic zirconia, uh -huh. which is a synthetic crystal made out of uh, where made out of the mineral mineral batidite, um, and it is almost impossible to tell the difference between the two. Uh, this one is the cubic zirconia, and this one is diamond. This is just a top-down look of a polished piece. 
um, and the craft of making one. Um, cubic zirconia was uh, made first in the 1960s, which is when the idea came about to make them. But the uh, craft of making them wasn't perfected until the 70s, uh, where Soviet scientists perfected it and then published it, and then they took the jewelry uh, market by storm because mm -hmm. by weight and look they're almost indistinguishable. indistinguishable. Uh, continue with their modern use. Obviously, we coat tools. Um, on the Mohs hardness scale, they are uh, ranked 10, which uh, they are the second highest thing on the Mohs hardness scale. There's this new uh, synthetic material out, but that's a whole other thing. Um, yeah, their density, their density makes them useful because um, they cannot be scratched by other items. So like concrete drills, it's uh, perfect for them. And what they do is they make the edge of whatever you're cutting uh, more polished, and they also prevent a buildup of material on the side of the drills or whatever the cutting tool is. Um, and it's worked out fairly well. Um, everything they thought it would do pretty much worked. And diamonds are actually used in audio equipment, which I didn't know until looking this stuff up. Uh, speakers use it. The domes on the inside of speakers some of them are made of di diamond because of their hardness. Their, the high frequency music will not dent the dome and will cause a more pure sound. And DJs also use uh, diamond needles, which can provide 10,000 plus hours of music without the quality ever uh, getting worse. And this is a treble speaker, I forgot what its actual name is, um, that has a little diamond crystal in the middle so that goes for about $8,000, which is pretty crazy. Um, yeah, there's the summary. Uh, we looked at how diamonds are formed, the past use for them, and how I use them today. So thanks for listening.